Hey, welcome to our uh, Love of Christ Believe series. I'm Pastor Steve. And I'm Pastor Paul. And we're continuing on this week. We're transitioning into our, uh, our next section from uh, What Do I Believe? The thinking part of um, uh, the Believe series. Now we're doing Act What Should I Do? And so these are just some, some actions and things that we do that are born out of the beliefs that we have uh, that, that have a set apart differently from from others as Christians this is what we do and so uh, one of the first things that we're looking at now is worship and and that can mean a lot of different things to different people and and uh, it's a very broad topic uh, but so we're here in the sanctuary because this is where we uh, as a church do most of our corporate worship and maybe that's something to talk about too this difference between personal and, and corporate worship yeah. I remember growing up as a kid I I, I worshiped in a large Lutheran a you know framed church and it just was huge with wooden pews and granite uh, surfaces everywhere and stained glass and it was uh, it was quite the uh, building and, and monstrosity and and worship was for me as as a child I mean I I certainly learned uh, how to worship and I had parents that you know were sitting with me in the pews and things like that and I grew up with hymns and mm -hmm. hymnals and went through that that whole process and uh, that uh, that style of worship has changed for for me a bit but um, it it's uh, it's certainly the worship that I grew up with as a as a as a child and it was good it was very formative for me it was excellent yeah when we think about worship we think about Sunday mornings we think about churches gathering together and doing those kinds of things and it can take so many different forms and and some people I think get caught up on the uh, what's the right way or wrong right. way to do worship and I, I think that that uh, presupposes that there's some sort of universal way in which God receives worship and and when you read through scriptures you find out that God it's not about sacrifices. He says, I, I prefer mercy <laughs> versus sacrifice. Or, you know, the sacrifices are there and the words are on their lips, but their hearts are far from me. And, and the one thing that God wants time and time again as you read through Scripture is he wants hearts that are close to him. David is a man after God's own heart. And, and the, those who are doing the things of God are zealous for his honor or, or seeking to praise God. And I think that's what, what worship really is, is it, it's a matter of the heart. And how does that work? Is that, is that with organ and, and hymns and with um, a, a regular uh, order of service that happens pretty much the same way from, from Sunday to Sunday? And maybe the only difference is whether or not you have communion or not. You know, that is a certainly a valid way to worship if hearts are connected to God. And, and I think that's always the, the question I have is that tag on, are hearts going to be connected to God through this style? And I think a lot of that is culturally uh, predetermined. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think the chapter does a good job this week of kind of talking about the worship of the heart and then the, the corporate worship as well. I, I always uh, try to be cautious when I, when I hear people say, well, I just worship Jesus on my own, mm -hmm. you know, and things like that. And I, I think you certainly can do that. I, I think, uh, in fact, I think that Scripture speaks to doing that uh, on a daily basis. But it also speaks to the corporate aspect. And I think a lot of times when we talk about worship, that's what we think about initially is simply just organ or praise band or contemporary or traditional. And, right. and uh, you know, worship is much, much broader than that. I think the chapter does a good job of, of uh discussing that aspect of, of worship. And really it's that, that attitude. What are the things that you do that connect you to God or that generate um, honor for God or turn and direct people toward God? Uh, those are the things that are worshipful. And, and when you think about that worship, you know, so close to worth, you know, God is worth so much. And so we're trying to honor and lift him up. And that can be by singing in the shower sometimes. Um, on our own <laughs> as yeah. we practice depends uh, on who's, if well, anyone's an earshot <laughs> well if it's sung with the heart <laughs> that's true it make doesn't a joyful matter. noise make a joyful anymore. noise it doesn't matter yeah. what kind yeah. of croak comes out and some people are like oh you don't want me to sing i said well it's not necessarily even about me hearing you sing it's about you generating that joyful noise to the lord and um 
I, I think that God hears the, the cries of our heart over the actual tone of our of our voices. Yeah, this is true. And and so so that's really the added. What is our attitude? And so uh, the challenge I think for for us as worship leaders uh, a lot of times is making sure that the the attitude of the heart is always directed towards God. And that it's one of those things. And, and if there's stumbling blocks we put in the way um, uh, of people having their hearts connected to God, then those are things that we kind of want to be aware of and think about. Um, but then sometimes, you know what, maybe uh, the, the stumbling block is something that we just can't, can't change. <laughs> you know? if, if you struggle to have your heart connected to God when you're at love of Christ because there's little kids uh, crying, you know what? There's not much we could do about that because we love having little kids here, and even little kids crying can be making joyful noise to God in, in their worship here. And so, um, you know, it, it's those things that we kind of have to balance out and just maybe come back and re remember what is this thing that we're doing? It's a, all of us together trying to connect our hearts to God. Um, and the more we can uh, do that together with that right attitude, that's really what God wants. And, yeah. and whether or not it looks like we're under control <laughs> sometimes, uh, we forget that that's maybe not the, uh, the most important thing is that heart connection uh, to God. Is there a question in here you wanted to take a look at? <clears throat> There's one that uh, I think for you, what worship song lyric best describes your thoughts and feelings about God? Yeah, what page is that on? That's on, uh, on page, 94, page 94. Page 94. Yeah, you know, there's so many worship lyrics. I, my favorite, honestly, my favorite worship lyrics are the ones that come from the Psalms. Yeah. They're the ones that just come straight out of Scripture. Um, you know, I lift my eyes up to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Maker of the heaven and the earth, uh, who does not sleep or slumber. You know, uh, you know that those those words. Uh, there are lots of songs that have have those lyrics in them, and uh, I, I find the best lyrics are the ones from from scripture. Yeah, yeah. I like the uh, indescribable song. Oh yeah, and trying yeah. to trying to get at God and just saying He's beyond our universe and our understanding. And you know, to me, that that song of, of praise to God and saying You are so high, <laughs> You are just amazing you know you are just a god of wonders and and hey I that's can't... a song too oh, right. oh, wow. yeah. oh that's man. we're just gonna keep on going so we can be here all day actually if we just go into into those lyrics so um if there's others that you can think of uh share with those also but you know too i, I think um there, there's another question on on 95 and uh, talking about worship becoming a heartless ritual and i think that's the biggest danger if worship is about connecting our hearts to god if we get so involved with the ritual, we can lose sight of the importance of that. And that, the Israelites fell into that all the time uh, with God. He was so frustrated with them. And so how do we go about make, be, making sure that it doesn't become a heartless ritual? Yeah, yeah, and I think that's what Jesus uh, really penalized the Pharisees for as, as well, because they had... Not only had they made, made it ritualistic, but they had added laws and requirements on top of the rituals, making it almost impossible for anyone to uh, fulfill those things. And so I think, yeah, I, you know, I think that's different for every person. And it, it's not about style. I think a lot of times we think, oh, well, traditional is so more ritualistic. We say that at love of Christ. But if I were to ask a lot of people that I grew up with, they would say, well, wait a second, you know, they're... There are some real issues with other types of worship and all that stuff. And I think, I think you said it really well. This is about a, a heart uh, relationship with, with God. And, you know, our goal on Sunday mornings at Love of Christ is that you experience the presence of God. Yeah. And, you know, that, that's, that's our hope. And, um, you know, I, I hope that the, the songs that we choose, the style that we worship in, uh, I hope all that stuff... The, the sermon, especially Pastor Steve's sermons, uh, you know, lead us to that point of really having this experience with God and, and his presence in our midst. And then sends us out, you know, throughout the week, continue that heart of heart of worship. Hey, that's, a, that's another song. So, <laughs> while we debate other uh, uh, song lyrics, we hope this, this discussion's been helpful for you. And then you can continue with your small group discussions as well. As we, uh, as we struggle together to make sure that our worship is something that is pleasing to God as it connects our hearts to Him 
Uh, and as he comes to us, you know, that's the other aspect we didn't really uh, talk about, but it's really this, that too yeah, much, but uh, we, we're going to talk about uh, that probably on Sunday a little bit about that, that give and take and the response. Uh, God comes to us first with his love and we respond. And, and that's a lot of times we think worship is, is about our response to God, but it's also about his coming to us mm-hmm. and that forgiveness of sins. And so um, as we're here getting ready for, for Christmas, we've got our Advent stuff all out here. Uh, we see and are worshiping God as he comes to us and we're amazed in that God of wonders coming to us in the babe of Bethlehem. And we pray that uh, your December is uh, one to, uh, to keep in your heart as you're connected to God. Anything else? Right. Sounds good to me. All right. Well, God bless you guys. Uh, we'll see you later. See ya. It's all about you. It's all about you. Jesus, I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it when it's all about you, all about you.